Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Jared Frank, cosmetic dermatologist and director of the Fifth Avenue Dermatology Surgery and Laser Center. Today I wanted to do a small educational video on the use of cosmetic silicone. It's a subject that's been talked about for several decades now. The, sub the product has actually been used for about 40 years. We now have an FDA approved product that we use off-label on the skin. It's called Silicon 1000. It's actually been around since the late 90s. It's FDA approved for uh, severe retinal detachment and we use it legally and off-label in the skin. Now, silicone is a filler. Uh, it's a permanent filler. It's actually one of the few permanent fillers available and it's something that a lot of dermatologists may not perform. It takes a certain extra level of expertise and it's not as common as the temporary fillers that many of you may know like Juvederm, Restylane, Radius, and Sculptra. Obviously the best advantage of using silicone is in the fact that it's permanent, but it must be done in a different way. We use what's called the micro droplet technique, which is what myself and most of my peers and mentors have been using um, for at least a decade or two now, and it really provides the maximum safety when using medical grade silicone. Now we, we don't use silicone for everything. I would say most commonly we use it for deep acne scars. We also use it in areas where temporary fillers may not last very long, like in the lips. And the way it's performed is that the silicone is placed in the skin in very small drops, what's called micro droplets. And if you could zoom in, you could see about a size of one micro droplet there. It's actually a fraction of the size of a, of a raindrop. And what we're doing is we're studying the skin with those very, very small micro droplets. Almost like one of those um, bean bags that you sit in. It feels very soft when you sit in on the outside, but when you run it in between your hands, you can feel the little micro beads. And that's really what we're doing to the skin. We're stimulating the body to grow its own collagen. So it creates for a very natural, very, very safe result. There are a few things that are essential. And number one, that you use the FDA approved medical grade silicone. There's a lot of illegal use out in the market of people using unclean industrial silicone that could be acquired by just about anybody. Uh, it's being performed in many countries, including the United States, illegally using large amounts at one time. And this, unfortunately, gives the cosmetic use of silicone a bad rap, using the appropriate product and uh, the appropriate technique. So again, when you do silicone, you're doing monthly treatments. The average lip augmentation may take three or four treatments over four months. Um, acne scars, depending on how severe, traumatic scars. We do sometimes use it for volume restoration or in um, wrinkles that may be a bit resistant to temporary fillers. Temporary fillers are usually recommended to be used first uh, for most indications, but once someone is happy with the way it looks, that's usually when we may convert them to something more permanent. Now, there has been quite a bit of controversy over the safety of using silicone, mostly due to its past use in breast implants, and for quite a while it was actually illegalized. Um, fortunately, in March of 2000, a New England Journal of Medicine article came out that really reviewed all the past data and it was proven that silicone was totally unrelated to any systemic diseases that may have been caused by breast implants in prior years. So now we see that silicone breast implants are safely and back on the market. They're considered a standard of care and we once again, at least for the last decade or two, have been able to use it in the skin using the medical grade silicone. So it's a very safe um, niche product. Again, we're not using it on everybody, but for the right patient, for the right indication, uh, in my opinion, it is one of the wonder drugs of cosmetic dermatology. You can do a little bit more research about it on my website at www.pfrankmd.com or you can come in for a consultation. Thank you. Have a good day.